Consider the thin threads weaving through a life, like the thread that ties a Marine to his sense of duty, or the thread between husband and wife, separated by war and distance, the thread of a wire guided by skilled and caring hands, the thread between heroes and angels, all of them woven together, forming the thin thread between life and death. I would uh, run for a few yards and then have to stop um, because I had, was out of breath. After serving 13 months in Iraq without incident, Major Chris Gillette was relieved to be back at Camp Pendleton, out of harm's way, or so he thought. As I got about halfway across the street, the lights st literally started going out, and I knew without a doubt I was in serious distress at that point. And my only thought was I had to get into that clinic. I just, you know, if it took everything I had, I had to get in there. I literally fell through the doors of the clinic. With no vital signs for two minutes, it looked like Chris was having a stroke or a heart attack. The Naval Hospital on base isn't equipped to handle such extreme cases, so they rushed him to Tri-City Medical Center, a Joint Commission-designated primary stroke center. Dr. Stephen Karras has been an emergency room physician at Tri-City for nearly four decades, and every bit of that experience worked in Chris's favor. I knew it pretty much from uh, the beginning because we went right away to the CT uh, angiogram as soon as they could uh, possibly do that. And I didn't know how much time I had. Known as the silent killer, a saddle pulmonary embolism was threatening the 52-year-old Marine's life, a massive blood clot blocking airflow in both pulmonary arteries. Dr. Kara says sitting for 20 hours on the plane home from Iraq was likely the first thread of danger. I'd never seen a saddle embolism before because they usually come in and they're an autopsy diagnosis. And so I had one there, so I didn't know what would happen next. Struggling for his life, Chris was rushed to an interventional radiology suite, one of three at Tri-City, each equipped with the best technology available. It was here that Dr. Justin Gooding inserted a catheter and began the delicate task of breaking up the massive clot by injecting clot-busting medication directly to the blockage. We're lucky to be able to use the, the latest technology here and uh, that definitely makes it easier to perform a procedure like this. And the easier it is to perform a procedure like this, the, uh, in general, the better outcomes you're likely to have. Chris's wife, Asha, didn't know what to expect when she flew to her husband's bedside from their home in Atlanta. When I saw him in the hospital, I didn't know if I was going to be saying goodbye or helping him recover. What she found was someone she calls a gift. ICU nurse Angie Perez. We don't call her Angie, we refer to her as Angel because she truly is an angel. She took such good care of him. The way she did it in such a caring and uh, you know, concerned manner just made me realize she was a very special uh, individual, not just as a nurse, but just as a person. He's gone over to Iraq to fight for our country and what an honor it is for me to be able to take care of him and try to help him survive. A medical team, experienced and highly skilled, state-of-the-art technology, and compassionate care, working together like interwoven threads. And six days later, Chris walks out of the hospital, but not for good. Humbled by the coordinated care he received from the entire team of medical professionals at Tri-City, Chris presented his group of lifesavers with challenge medals, just like the ones heroes earn for their exceptional performance in the field. If a hero is someone that's dedicated to their job and to their profession and willing to give their all to help someone else, then I would count everyone at Tri-City as a hero. That challenge coin sits on my dresser, um, so it's a constant reminder every day when I see it. Remarkable, I just felt like hugging him because I didn't. I didn't expect him to be in that good a shape. It was so good to see him alive. You know, I just, uh, I really, I, I get a little emotional. Sometimes I get tears in my eyes, and, and, and I did at that time. These folks are truly uh, dedicated to their 
mission and our as far as I'm concerned the best uh, around at doing it. Uh, I truly believe that if they'd taken him anywhere else I might not have my husband here today. Um, going to remember them for the rest of my life without a doubt.